sensational as he leads the league in touchdown passes. It's the Vikings and the Saints next on Madden Football. Well, later tonight in November, snowfall is forecasted to hit the Twin Cities, but right now, calm outside, and of course, a calm day inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today, we hit double digits, week 10, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis, and Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club, They've been the talk of the NFL so far. Nine wins in their first nine games. And some people subscribe to the theory that a loss might not be the worst thing for them. They've had it easy all year long. How would they do handling adversity? Meanwhile, for the visiting Saints, they come in off a loss last time. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. And last week's loss came despite a clean game on his end, throwing the ball with two touchdowns and zero interceptions. His job this week is simple. Do it again. Continue to avoid turnovers and hope that what sunk them last week resolves itself this time around. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, we knew coming in it was going to be a long afternoon if they weren't able to hold up against this pass rush, huh? What we didn't know was that protection was going to spring a leak on the first play from scrimmage. Got after him right out of the gate. Under pressure, and they got to him again. They wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. Boy, how about this to start a ball game? That's twice in a row now, Charles, if they get to it. And how often do we talk about offenses that operate off of a script to begin games? Feels like this defense had their script together on this one, and their script said put the quarterback down and do it fast. A miserable start here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and very long. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. I'm not sure how much I really love that call. It almost seems like a little bit of a give up there. But maybe what they were thinking is, we've got a chance to pop one. They think we're just going to give up here, hand it to the big man, and maybe he can get through. Sometimes there's a little bit of courage in play calling that maybe we don't give enough credit. So here come the Vikings as they get set for their first drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. And he's had such a sensational season to this point, leading the NFL in passing yards. He's been helped out a lot by an outstanding set of receivers, and he's quick to give them credit. But I think even they would tell you that he's the guy that makes this offense go. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So nothing doing there, and it's second down. He'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. All right, Charles, you know, we've spoken about this offense plenty, how great they've been all year. 9-0 now into the back half of the season. Super Bowl favorites without a doubt. I think everyone agrees on that. What do you think is the thing that most stands between them and a perfect season? I think it's themselves. I think it's their team, how they approach things, how they conduct themselves during the week, practicing, getting ready and then going out and playing. Can't take your foot off the gas pedal at this stage. Doesn't matter if it's a weak team you're playing or not. Look, when I talked with one of the best golfers of all time, he told me he never played against the field. He just played against himself and his own standard. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And they come in losers of two straight. And remember, they've got the open date on their calendar next weekend, but you think it's vitally important, Charles, that they focus on the task at hand here? Absolutely, because these players, they know what's coming up, and the difference between taking time off following a win versus doing so on a three-game losing streak, 
that's absolutely huge because they may come back if they lose this game to a facility and there may be new faces in there and some teammates lost. So first and 10 now from the 30. A first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. The numbers there for Kamara from a week ago. 14 carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Not a horrendous week last week running the ball, but definitely room for improvement for their numbers. No doubt, they made some slight adjustments to how they're going to call plays this week in hopes they can kick those numbers up a notch. Carter's throw caught by Alvin. And they're going to this across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for 26 and a first down. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Now here's a pass on first down. It's knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to get it to his running back, Alvin Kamara. But it's going to be second down. You look at this defense for the Vikings. Now they've been pretty much a mess against the pass number 31 in the league. And when you're getting ready to face the number one overall offense in the NFL, it does not matter where you rank defensively because you got your hands full. You don't know what you're going to face, but you know that that's a strong unit that you're getting ready for. So the assignment, a tough one here for this defense. You've got a quarterback ranked in the top five in passing yards. What do they need to do to try to keep him under wraps? Well, they didn't sleep a whole lot getting ready for this. Well, I can guarantee you there's just so much to combat. But I think they're going to zero in on taking away his top target. Double, triple that they have to make the other guys rise up and try and beat them. They'll feel a whole lot better if those guys win in the routes instead of their number one guy. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good a week ago in that win over Minnesota. And the way they did it was by getting after the quarterback. Sacked him seven times in that game. Came from all angles, created a lot of illusions, and especially just beat them man for man. That's the kind of defense that really frustrates an opponent. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. Third and seven now. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds and complete. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful, but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. The kick by Lutz is good. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. Well, both teams kind of feeling each other out here. Now after three drives, we have a score with that field goal. Yeah, they're still waiting for their breakout drive to come to them, all right? They're using the playbook well. They're looking for that extra section that says touchdowns instead of field goals. But they'll take the three for now and try and get set up for more later. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They are, for the moment, the best team in football, 9-0 entering play here. And, Charles, I don't know if we call them a surprise 9-0, but the way that they have been winning definitely opened up a lot of eyes around the NFL. Well, what we've seen from them so far this season, you can't stop them on offense, you can't score on them on defense. So, to me, if you're going to play against them, you have to bring your best game and hope they throw a clunker in that day to give yourself a chance. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So here are the Saints to take over. They lost two straight coming in, but good news for them right now. They've got the lead and the football. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He 
He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Now Carr. Here's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counting on to be that in line point of attack player that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And that one to the right side and incomplete. When you look at the Saints defense, and they find themselves just outside the top 10 in the league against the pass, currently bringing up the number 11 spot. And it's really difficult to prepare for this team. This is the number one overall passing team in the NFL, but it shouldn't be hard to get excited about playing against them. The ultimate test going against that unit. And that's why you and I are excited to broadcast this game. Yes, sir. This now a third and four. They'll look to throw again. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere. But it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first and ten deep in their own territory. The New Orleans offense set to take over. The well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much, because you're right. You get the extra rest, you get a chance to heal up and kind of you know, do a little bit of a reset for this team. But it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field. So now, a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun now on third down, Carr. That is caught. They can't tackle him. And <laughs> yeah, he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Car now on first down. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. To throw his car. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second down and two. Again, it's Carr. And his throw is incomplete. Well, he leads the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. 
It's been a Pro Bowl type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player, but sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. Yeah, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. So Carr will exit stage right and on his lutz for the Saints field goal. He made his first, this from 47 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will make it 6 to nothing. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. On play action, they'll throw. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. The play action fake, they'll look to throw. They're going back to the same well, it's Hawkinson again. And just three yards on the catch there, he couldn't get away. And that'll make it second down. Six nothing our score after one. Second quarter now for Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. Here's second and seven. As they've got it as we resume action. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Open man is Osborne. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 28. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. At that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now back to throw. Going for it all. And that is incomplete. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they deliver there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Second and goal from inside the five. He'll drop to throw. And he's got it. Touchdown. A great play there. With touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Vikings are an extra point away now from moving out in front. And there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point right down the middle. And they take the lead here at 7-6. to six. 
So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they have the game here followed by the open date on the calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are, but let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards on the play. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. And they'll fake the jet sweep there and instead hand it Camara. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down. First and 10. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice first there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. Throwing on first down is Carr, and he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. A third field goal in the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Shotgun now for Carr. To the back of the end zone, but two high for everybody and incomplete. So you're looking for that one. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. The kick by Lutz is good. And they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. to seven. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Now they try the right side here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. They'll look to throw here on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Second and one. And that'll be incomplete. 
It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. And they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll set up a throw. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. This offense so far on third down, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and six. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. And now that brings up fourth down there. A loss of six yards on the sack. Blake Gillikin on the punt here as he'll send this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. to throw here. Throw right side, going to be complete to Moss. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 70th catch for him on the year, like so many others. This goes for a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Taken down here by the Saints. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. But you just knew that these rushers were eager to do that today. Put him on the ground. Their plan? Introduce themselves individually to this rookie quarterback. They set a load a big way there with a loss of double-digit yards on that sack. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22.
He'll look to throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out, and the Saints will have the football back. Alvin Kamara and the Saints set to start their next drive. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. On first and 10, here's Carr. Here's Johnson with a reception. He'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. And 22 more yards there and another first down. To throw, it's Carr. And incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. They'll get this out to Camaro. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. On first down, Carr. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Car to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Throwing his car on third down. And that one too wide. And he can play. It's Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for a long game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. And he'll work this back to right around the line of scrimmage and surrender there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in a minute. But first, let's take a spin around the NFL and see what's going on here in week number 10. We'll begin up in the Still City, Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh. And that's been a back and forth game, all tied in the second quarter. Next, we'll head east. It's on to Cincinnati as we check in on the Bengals at home at Paycor Stadium. And they've got the lead over the visiting Houston Texans. Jamar Chase with a touchdown reception from Joe Burrow. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City. See what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Carolina Panthers. Josh Allen leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. From a yard or two deep, here comes the return. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. He might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Minnesota. We've sat in a lot of meetings, and they always talk about the offense taking advantage of beginning a half. Because special teams coaches don't listen to that. They want to take advantage with their own unit, and they just did. And yeah, they trailed in the locker rooms, and they changed that immediately. I think they drew that one up special. That felt like something he pulled out of his pocket that he'd been holding for a while, and they were able to use it effectively. That's caught at the one. And he'll get into the end zone to push the lead up to a field goal. So that effort gives him a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage, at least give your team a fighting chance. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Car. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. They'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. Under pressure, they got him again. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. So here are the Vikings to take over. They are working on that very impressive nine-game win streak, looking to get it to 10 as they've got the lead here, first and 10. On play action, they'll throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. 
And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. He's been a one-man wrecking crew these last couple of plays. This time, 18 more and a first down. Just more of the same here. It's back-to-back -back catches for him to start the drive. It looked his way quite a bit and with good reason as this duo picks up yet another first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. He'll look to throw. And this is caught at the end. And the Vikings are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Just picking up yardage and bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. They'll send Moss in motion right. And they'll fake it on a jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. They'll drop to throw. He right, tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Demario Davis. And the Saints are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. That pick hurts a little extra because it was third down. You were already in field goal range. You know what he's going to hear all night, all next week? Situational football. Understand what's going on because you expressed it perfectly. Three points were in their hip pocket. They had those. Now, those went by the wayside. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. It's what you call a rookie mistake. Now, after the INT, it's Carr looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Sauce Gardner picks it away, and his crew will take over the football at the 35-yard line. Now, their defense got in the football with an interception. They trot out their Charles in the very first play. They give the football right back. Brandon, I almost expect you coming like an auctioneer. We got two, we got two. Do I hear three? Remember, it was two in a row. Would we hit three in a row? Because these offenses, they've got to be a little bit more careful as they go forward. These defenders, they're locked in and really focused. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. They'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And it brings up third and five now. Now back to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. Here's Carr. And that one complete downfield to Johnson. 
And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 42. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Second and seven. Again, it's Kamara. Dropped at the 35, so able to display his strength, but not much room to operate. Third and three. To throw his car. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Meanwhile, Carr's throw complete there to Johnson. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Here now, second and four. Throwing now is Carr. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, but it's going to lead to third down. This will be play number nine in the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Again, it's Carr. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Sauce Gardner picks it off. And the Vikings are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. And that could turn out to be a giant play, Charles. You've got an offense driving to take the lead, but they're turned away on the INT. And I think that we might look back on this in the fourth quarter and say, that was the play of the game. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Second and 11. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Tough to imagine any team wanting to give a player like this up in a trade. I know they're happy to have it. It is amazing, isn't it? But we have seen big time guys change teams. Jimmy Graham, Brandon Marshall, and their new teams are really excited to have them because they provide big time targets. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to make it fourth down. He's going to be stopped behind the line. He needed a couple, but he didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Saints will have the football back. And a design QB run in that spot. Maybe trying to catch the defense off guard a bit. It didn't work, though. 
Again, we're seeing that college influence come into the NFL. Quarterback run game on fourth down. We didn't see that very much in the previous years in the NFL. No, seeing it more, saw it there, did not work out. Turnover on downs. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? But this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. A throw there, but that's going to really not be complete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter, and the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that, but the rushing game almost non-existent. And with the lead, there he goes left side. Now he's loose down the left sideline. He's to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. His ninth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Kevin O'Connell choosing to leave his guys out there. and They'll go for two. They'll look to throw. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And that bumps their lead up even further. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide. Not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that someone, if they're going to catch the ball, Make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The New Orleans offense set to take over. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Now Carr. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Still no touchdowns allowed by this defense. They get the interception there. CD, they have been rock solid. And at this point, I think they have to expect that they're going to see some shots taken down the field. And that was almost a desperation throw right there. Just kind of hoping something good can happen. A completion, a pass interference. But this was anticipated well, and they came up with the INT. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. Since emerging from the locker room at intermission, He's looked pretty sharp, hasn't he? He's running in this third quarter like he got the orange slices at the half. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember when he we got the orange slices, not the carrot stick? Oh, boy. There was always that mom. There was always that mom. One yours wasn't mine. All right, the carrot sticks. 
<laughs> but this guy, orange slices, and been reading the surface tablet watching the defenses, and he's made some nice adjustments. It'll be first and goal when we come back. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. Not the first and goal play they drew up. Multiple defenders in to bring him down to the ground. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Back to throw here. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Looking to throw. And that will be incomplete as well. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. But you know, normally I'd get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, Two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they, unfortunately, are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Open man downfield is Johnson. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Here's Carr to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Smith. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and six. from midfield. Here's Carr. Now get this out to Kamara. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that will bring up third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. Wow, I mean, it's so rare to even see one attempted from that distance, CD, let alone converted. But he came through with confidence and matches what was Tom Dempsey's 43-year NFL record at one point of 63 yards. Yeah, I can still see that highlight of Dempsey making that kick. And nowadays, we see it a little bit differently because, remember, Dempsey was a straight-on kicker. But these guys nowadays, the range keeps increasing, and they keep putting it through the posts. They'll start on the ground here on first down. Across midfield. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. 151 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They'll look to throw here on first down. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And this will leave him a yard short. 
Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 24 now, here's second down and one. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. They'll look to throw here. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. They're going to look to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. With his 13th touchdown of the year and second of the game. And the Vikings add on to their lead. And it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. He has really settled in throwing the football. And that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie. But he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Back to throw. Over the middle to Smith. Five yards, now it's third and five. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. To throw, it's Carr. Oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Carr, got to have this one. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Well, I guess an interception at this point on fourth down is just as bad as an incomplete pass. Either way, the ball goes over the other side. He has a tough spot to be in this late in the game, and there's not a whole lot he can do there. And he winds up giving the ball away. And now out comes Minnesota. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. First down, they'll go to the ground attack. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And yeah, that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. They go backwards there in two yards, and second and one is now third and three. They'll set up a throw. And he's caught. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. He's been the go-to guy, and they needed a big play there on third down when his way it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll drop to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. Marcus May with a pick. And the Saints are going to have it here at their own nine-yard line. 
He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. And just looking ahead, it would appear that that bye week is coming at the right time. They'll have two weeks to chew on this one, though probably not one that they want to chew on. A poor performance from start to finish. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. Carr. Johnson with a completion over the middle. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Carr. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question, and my suspicion. Is... The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Multiple rushers break through to drop him for the seventh time this game. Remember, throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Now third down and very long. Shotgun now for Carr. Pressure coming, and they got him once again. Dre Greenlaw getting home on that one. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. Here comes the Saints punter now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 43. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And this offense on third down today, they've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and seven. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Carr now on first down. He completes it to Alave. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 
Carr able to locate his running back, Kamara. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Play action. Now it's Carr. It gets this complete to Shahid. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. The car's throw caught by Alave. Here's a second and five. Again, it's Carr. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air. And defensively, they were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. And oh my goodness, here's a fifth interception. Picked up by Pat Sertan. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a fourth quarter pick six here, and that one might put this game out of reach, CD. I certainly agree with that, partner. And I know one thing, though. That team that just got the pick six, they're going to keep playing until this one's over. Better be careful. They're looking to get another one. Extra point attempt to come here. And that'll increase their lead to 28. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. On the return, here's Shaheed. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Now the Saints coming back out ready to go for this next drive. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, with how lopsided this game has been, even one score might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here, give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. Meanwhile, Carr's throw there taken in by Smith. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Carr. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Second and a couple. Now a play fake, Carr. That one complete down the field to Smith. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camp, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So for Minnesota, they keep on rolling 10 and 0 now to start the year. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Denver Broncos. Meanwhile, for the Saints, it's a loss that'll drop them back to 500 through 10 games. And they'll get a late bye next week, which might be coming at the right time. And they'll be back in action in week 12. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.